Hello all. So today I'm going to talk about the oil, bring us up to uh, date on what's happening with oil prices, which uh, directly relate to gasoline prices and all kinds of prices. Not too many prices have gone down, but it's gone down a little bit, two or three cents here and there, for gasoline and um, plastic parts and that sort of thing. Going down a little bit, but not extreme. Why is this happening? You know, a lot of people are asking, why are we going down in price all of a sudden? Well, it looks like it's a combination of things. First of all, we've put too much oil on the market. The economy is too bad around the world to support all this oil, to use it all up, to have the money to spend to use oil up either in manufacturing or in gasoline or in shipping, uh, shipping goods across the oceans, flying, that sort of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to go over to, to uh, Brent crude and look at uh, what the prices are today. So they started out at about uh, 79.4, something like that. And they kind of bumped along until they got about this far. And it took a little bit of a dive down to 79. Then it sharply rose up to uh, 80 point, oh, $80 and 40 cents, something like that kind of wandered along, dipped a little bit, back down to 79.5 sort of thing, then came back up to 80.4 again, and then took a nosedive. All, very sharp, very down, it went all the way down past 78.5, back up through, and then right at the end it was about 78.3. Uh, that's dollars a barrel for crude oil we're talking about. So the question has to be asked, who's going to suffer and who's going to win from all this uh, up and down with the oil prices? Well, first of all, the rig count here in the U.S. is slightly falling or stagnating. The uh, rig count out in the Gulf of Mexico, stagnating. I think it was down one. Uh, mostly just staying even. Rig counts around the world, of course, are going up and down. I can't find an accurate rig count for around the world. So let's, uh, let's go look at what countries are going to be hurt and why. In June of 2014, uh, oil cost $115 a barrel. There are predictions out there that say it could fall to $50 a barrel within 10 years. I very much doubt that. I think that's... Uh, uh, I can't imagine oil prices going below what it is now. Okay, who's, who, what country would this really hurt? Or what, is, what does each country need the oil prices to be to break even? In the U.S., they need $100 a barrel. In Venezuela, they need $165 a barrel. Nigeria needs also $165 a barrel. Saudi Arabia needs 80 to ninety dollars a barrel. Why does Venezuela and Nigeria need so much, need their oil to sell so high? Well one of the reasons is because Venezuela as a country together buys its oil and then distributes it to the people at about 30 cents a gallon. So they buy theirs in bulk, very intelligent, and they get less for their money. So that's why they need more money up front for their oil. Same with Nigeria. They also highly subsidize gasoline prices. Saudi Arabia is a whole different uh, system. Saudi Arabia was very smart. They've been taking part of their oil revenue and putting it into a savings account. Right now they have $740 billion to put against any fall in the oil market. It won't affect them at all, really. Russia and Iran along with other countries are asking Saudi Arabia to lower their production so they can get their prices back up. Saudi Arabia, because of their uh, holiday fund as it's called, are telling people they're not going to reduce their output of oil. Uh, OPEC has always been that way. It, uh, it very rarely ever really works together very well and they rarely ever get together and do anything uh, to better off the, the OPEC group itself. It's pretty much each country for its own. In the U.S., it looks like fracking, if it drops much more, will completely come to a halt. And if it ever gets to $50 a barrel, it will not support any oil drilling at all in the U.S. 
Gulf of Mexico or Canada and even Mexico itself. About a month ago I started noticing that the uh, the barges in San Francisco Bay, the barges that park, that bring the oil that's pumped from California, Oregon, and Washington, parts of Canada, are brought down here into the San Francisco Bay Area where, they're, where it's processed into different things such as gasoline, plastics. So one thing I've noticed lately, for a couple years now, it's been normal that between 8 and 11 barges have been parked in San Francisco Bay. The one thing we have noticed is that the barges have gotten smaller and smaller. Lately, we've seen very few barges in San Francisco Bay. Let me go up and show you. There seems to only be two in San Francisco Bay today. The others are cargo ships, transporting cargo not oil. And then today I went up and saw this. Looks like about five barges on San Francisco Bay. Four large ones, one small one. So the question is, is this good or bad? Well, the good parts are that the refineries aren't refining as much oil there's not as much oil being transported or pumped and fracking is slowing down some maybe not not as much as we'd like to but it is slowing down some the uh, people as a whole around the planet will become a little bit wealthier and be able to spend a little bit more money because the fuel cost is down you never know what the heck is going to happen with oil or what is going to happen in the future but it looks like we're in one of those those errors where there's going to be fuel shortages and price spikes and price declines. It's going to go all over the place it looks like. So I'll keep us uh, all informed with this and we'll find out what uh, what's going to happen this go around. Okay, um, appreciate all the ups and downs. On one note, if you feel like uh, giving me a thumbs down, just uh, write down something such as uh, you're not accurate here or I don't believe this or something like that, you know, give a reason, that would be cool. Um, and appreciate the comments and the new subscribers. So on another hot San Francisco day here in December, we'll see you next time.